Okay, great. Well, I'm going to dive in and get started. And hopefully remember to actually switch this instead of not switching it, which I did once. Because I'm very professional. The thing is, demons in Dark Souls don't really do stuff. They're not sort of entities that do stuff the way they are depicted in medieval Christian mythology. Um, they're more like calamities that happen and people have to deal with. Or had to before the world ended. So, um, <clears throat> last time we finished Blight Town, worked our way back up through here and reached Sen's Fortress, which is a kind of a proving ground for anyone who wants to actually visit Anor Londo, the home of the gods. And uh, we met these snake guys who guard it. Sen's Fortress itself is one of the parts of the game that uh, breaks people, which I've been I've been mentioning periodically is a thing that happens. And not just by uh, killing your character really easily. But the thing about it is, it's kind of... Um, I think it teaches you to play Dark Souls the way Dark Souls is meant to be played if you haven't picked it up already by this point of the game. Um, which is because it's honestly just much more in character, similar to a kind of a, a classic D&D dungeon. <laughs> um, If you have trouble getting through this sort of thing, just think of it as, you know, it's 1978 and you're playing a Gygax-designed Dungeons & Dragons dungeon. Turn every corner with your shield up. Check everything. Poke it with a long stick from far away. Be wary of traps. Um, if you pay attention, this is not a very difficult area to get through. It's um, really just more about observation and being careful. So anyone who is having trouble getting through this zone, I would recommend that you just take it slow and steady and careful. Check every corner, look out look out for, you know, things in windows above you. Just get the timings of the traps. It's not that difficult. And um, the main reason why people have trouble with it is I think that they get impatient and instead of doing this incredibly slow and steady, very careful, poke everything with a stick, turn all corners with your shield up, sort of method of exploration, they instead, they get impatient, they're like, okay, I know what's here, the snake men, I've figured out how to fight them, it's fine. And uh, that's how you die. Case in point, I forgot that these guys are too heavy for me to kick, so I couldn't kick them off the edge. Um, which is a viable strategy in most parts of the game, but... Uh, it is uh, the old daggers up the jacksy here. Oh, shite. So I survived this fall, which is a problem because this thing will aggro the second I move. <laughs> I didn't know that you could survive the fall from here, but if I'm lucky, I'm just going to sprint around here and get in through this doorway, which is actually the path back up. Or it's one of the paths back up. So, um, down at the bottom of Sen's Fortress is this pit of sort of black tar with four titanite demons in. Yeah, I guess I'm used to just aggroing them instinctively um, and killing them, but we're not going to be fighting these guys until I have the, uh, the ring that lets us walk through the mud without trouble. So I think that's the way, yeah, that's where we came in, but since I'm here anyway, I may as well show you this illusory wall. So, they're very difficult to fight in that space because you can't move very fast and uh, there's a lot of stuff in the way, but they are useful to come and get later if we want to get some upgrade materials. So, this is a little secret area. This guy is the guy who opened the gate for us and now he's going to attack us because of reasons. Um, he has a, he has a, he has a, a problem, I guess, with uh, people coming into the fortress that he opened the gate of. You know, if he didn't want it to happen, he really could have just left the gate closed. But I suppose when you are a divinely appointed watch person, you do have to fulfill your duty regardless of how you feel about it. So, you know, I would simply not oh, get kicked in the face and die. Um, I would simply not wait for the bells of awakening to be rung and then, you know, fulfill my divine duty. But um, I'm just built different. So this is one of the three killable giants in this zone. 
It's also the first time we'll actually see giant giants, I believe. I love their design. Um, they, they feel very weighty, and I think it's really cool the way they have this sort of, like, dangling iron plates attached to the front of them. It's um, It gives the impression of something ancient that's just been sitting here for a very, very long time. He indeed large. So, he drops something. I've always felt that there must be some kind of secret item around here, but that isn't, as far as I can remember. I think you can jump off here if you're, if you're careless, but that's not a good idea. That's uh, going to result in your death. So, um, I've definitely died from falling off that bit before, which is, means I'm kind of wary of it, but I guess if you have enough hit points, it's fine. Um, and does explain why the guy uh, that we aggroed into these fan blades does often survive. In fact, uh, he will path through the same pathway we took and um, climb back up and come fight you. <laughs> it's just that it's easier to fight him on that side of the bridge rather than um, rather than trying to fight him on the bridge at the same time as everything else is happening. So I do think that, um, like. I can be careless simply because I know where everything in this zone is. I know where every little um, trap is, I know where the, every monster location is, just because I've been through it t tons and tons of times. It's just etched onto my memory. Um, but if you are coming... This is remastered, yeah. Um, which I think is worth pointing out is a really good remaster because it's changed nothing, well, almost nothing, except the visuals, and the visuals are tonally and characterfully the same they just uh, have higher resolution and better you know like mip mapping whatever that is and um ah my blood stain it has been two days since i realized i died so we're gonna waste our last heavy soul arrow to blast this guy and give him a horrible surprise and then can i get the drop no i completely fucking failed <laughs> That should send him down the hole. Using backstabs to uh, dispose of enemies is just kind of funny to me. But we mustn't stand around here too long because giant trap boulders come rolling down here if we're not careful. But yeah, so there is there is kind of a similarity, if you ask me, between this and sort of um, classic D&D &D dungeons. And it's this kind of idea where there is an antagonistic relationship between the designer and the player, which is something that in, in many in the last while um, is not really done anymore in, in game design, which I think is understandable and generally a good thing, but um, for sort of a challenge-based gameplay, it's generally good to have some antagonism going on. So one of the reasons that this is one of the areas of the game that, as I have said a few times, can break people is um, and just make them sick of the game and stop is is just that it feels unfair in a way that others don't. I would argue that it is not unfair. Very little in Dark Souls is actually unfair. Um, also, I did in fact intentionally aggro that uh, serpent so that it would get squished by a boulder. Use every tool at your disposal. In this land, all the fists are raised against you, therefore. If you can bait things into dying in their own stupid traps, by all means do so. So this is the Ring of Steel Protection, which is just generally a useful thing to have. Um, it boosts your armor value, which, as someone who's going to be using light armor for most of the game, might come in handy in a few in a few places, although... In fact, I might switch to it now, because um, we won't be killing enough creatures to really get the benefit of the Evil Eye health regen. Um, that's more effective when you're killing a lot of weak things. Also. Uh, note that there are these statues everywhere, piled up, all over the place. I find these kind of curious and enigmatic. I'm not really sure what their whole deal is. These are the statues of... These are statues of the Silver Knights. Um, so, I'll come back to that in a minute, actually. But before then, I just want to point out this thing I was saying about the antagonistic relationship and learning to just not... Well, the difference between Dark Souls and Dark Souls Remastered, mechanically they are the same. There are almost no mechanical changes made. One is that you can change your um, 
you can change your oh, what is it called? Uh, your covenant at bonfires, which is something you can do in the later Dark Souls games, but not in the original Dark Souls one. The only other mechanical change is that they have added a uh, bonfire at the um, at the blacksmith Vemos. So as far as I know, those are the only actual hard changes. I tried to look this up when I when I got the remastered version, and that's all I could find. Other than that, it's completely cosmetic. But I just want to point out that this uh, this progression of traps that you go through. The first trap in this zone is right in the first doorway. You step on a floor plate and it shoots you in the face with arrows. Well, yeah, they did fix bugs as well. In fact, that might be one re major reason why it's a different category, because many speedruns depend on uh, exploiting bugs. So if you have a different version of the game with different bugs in it, um, it counts as a different thing for speedrunning, really. So you learn to look out for traps, and if you're not careful, you get in trouble, but um, the first couple are in front of you, this one's behind you, there's a kind of progression where it, you learn to deal with one thing and then it mixes it up to try and trick you. Similarly, the uh, giant iron boulder thingies slam through here, and um, they've been rolling there before, but now they start rolling here instead. There is some kind of mechanical governance to the way these things uh, rearrange themselves, but I have never been able to find out what it is. I've tried to look it up in the past. But, um... Yeah, as I said before, the bow is more about... Um... It's more about, um... Wait, hang on. I don't want to do what? Shoot that sorcerer. What does it do? Because I've never been able to remind remember what it does to shoot that sorcerer. So, um... Yeah, this uh, these boulders basically will point in different directions, depending on how you turn this handle. Um... So they were shooting through here before, which was dropping them down in the other way. Putting them over here will smash open the wall that that snake was lying in front of, which is kind of a hint that that will happen. The reason why that snake man is asleep there is to cl clue you in that something might change with regards to it. And you can point it in different directions to do different things. I think it might just be based on a timer or on the number of um, rocks that roll in a certain direction, rather than being based on... Um, Random randomness or through triggering different things in different areas. So, yeah. Um, oh, hey, there's guys down here. I don't remember there being guys down here. I know that um, one of these snake men that, that spawns on the staircase can get knocked down here by the, the boulder that we <laughs> dodged at the start, but... Hmm... Hey, Sigma, do you think you could do me a favour? Could you, like, help, maybe? Or are you just gonna sat just sit there like a big big old onion, just doing nothing? Is that it? Run up against a wall, or a ball to be precise. I'm afraid I'm a bit too tough to be up running those things. So here I sit in quite a pickle, but who knows? Perhaps we'll have another development. <laughs> I guess you could say he's a pickled onion. Let's see what the message says. I could try some rolling. Ah, no chance. My head would spin. Hmm. It's kind of a nice little reference there to the fact that if you wear too much armor, you get a slow a slow roll with a long recovery time. Try kicking? No. Who would suggest such a? Th I'm going to downvote that. Who would? Ugh, who would? Who would ever kick the best character in Dark Souls off a cliff? Utter cruelty. Oops. I'm still a bit short on the timing for um, parrying these guys. Because I never used to parry them. Um, this is only the first like run through Sen's Fortress where I've actually bothered trying to parry these things. Because they're so easy to backstab because they lock themselves into their animations so quickly. Case in point. Also, it helps that we leveled up our dagger a whole bunch at the end of the last stream.
Now, will this have reset and send a boulder slamming down to hit me if I run up here? That's the real question. Looks like we're all right. But yeah, so this kind of antagonistic relationship in dungeon design. Um, when they people started playing D&D &D in the first place, it was an adversarial game. It wasn't so much about the role playing and it was more about, um, you know, competitive dungeon crawling, so to speak. And there was this idea that the GM was there to screw you over and, and beat you. Oop, nope, there it is. So if you touch that at all, even if you touch it from behind when it's visibly stationary, it will still do a ton of damage and knock you over. So, oh, I did mention that um, we knocked a hole in the wall over here. I'm not actually going to go through there yet, probably, because we'll need to come back there later once we have a certain key. But, um, actually, let's go anyway, because it's the first meeting with a certain character who's going to be very relevant to us as a sorcery build. It's possible to actually ride this thing down, but you can get into that uh, room underneath from another angle anyway, so... Oh, hi, Mavrinthia. Huh. <laughs> Well, I mean, ostensibly, in the modern understanding of, of running a role-playing game good, the GM is not adversarial, it is a cooperative storytelling experience between a group of players and a GM. But um, I do think there should be some adversarial element. But yeah, so the way you kind of get these... Can I read that? Nope. Let's just talk to him first. Hmm. You seem quite easy. A rare thing. I am Logan. I'm a bit cooped up, as you can see. I have a bright idea. Suppose you set me free. I'm old and empty-handed, but I could repay you with knowledge and sources. This place is melting my mind. The inactivity is repressive. Oh, okay. I see how it is. I wonder if he knows I'm behind him. Um, it's the same guy who invaded me last stream. Oh, interesting. He's probably just going to kill me. <laughs> yep, there we go. Well, at least he didn't uh, drop on me immediately after spawning in from stories up, even if he is displaying bad manners. Um, I've always found it a really difficult to PvP as a sorcerer. Huh. I have no idea. I just know he invaded me last time. But there is a, a countdown timer, so I can't be invaded again immediately afterwards. So, who knows? If it is that guy again, probably. And um, if I do get invaded again, I will probably just run through in human mode so that I don't have to repeat everything forever. But um, regardless of that, like, I do think that Sense Fortress is an interesting concept. It's... I've said before that on these streams I'm not going to bother, like, trying to avoid spoilers. I'm just going to... Um, talk about whatever. See, that's what I've been trying to get to happen every time I fight these ones in the opening. If you um, get them to stand on the trap, it will shoot them as well. Which is itself um, a good thing to learn on your way in, you know, that you can use their environment against them. Which is also itself, because everything in Dark Souls is a hint about something else, a clue that these guys are maybe not native to this place, apart from the fact that, like, they're big snake guys um, who don't look like any of the statues here. But yeah, so I've said before that I'm going to just freely talk about spoilery things uh, that one might enjoy putting together in one's own head when playing Dark Souls for the first time. Um, such as, for example, what I was going to talk about a second ago, which is that Sen's Fortress is this kind of proving ground where in ancient days those, who, those mortals who thought they might um, meet the gods in person could overcome these many, many trials and challenges and... Um, eventually ascend to Anor Londo, the home of the gods. Um, meet the gods in person and uh, do whatever it is you do when you meet the gods in person. Yeah, so he paths through there and he'll drop down from here in a second.
But uh, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, oh, right, the snake men and... So, the fact that this place is um, full of... Where is he? He's taking his sweet time. I don't like to leave aggroed enemies alive in Dark Souls because they have this irritating habit of just pathing through the level from another angle unexpectedly and um, hitting you from behind at the worst possible moment. But yeah, so the fact that this place is full of full of those Silver Knight statues suggests to me that perhaps it was once guarded by Silver Knights, who are of course the Knights of Gwyn, and Gwyn is of course the leader of the gods of Anor Londo. So um, I think that that's a really uh, a, fa a fairly reasonable presumption to make. Although what is odd is the fact that they are human-sized rather than Silver Knight-sized, um, and they are almost scattered around haphazardly. It's like a warehouse rather than. You know, the way you would decorate a fortress or a temple. It's kind of a... Kind of just stacks and heaps of them. You know, the... Uh, come on down to Sun's Spare Silver Knight statue. Uh, what? The words I forget really, really do confuse me sometimes. What the hell is the word for... Um, emporium. Emporium. Emporium is the word I've been looking for. Thank you so much. Um, that was weird timing because I actually said that before you suggested it, but whatever. Let's see if I can get the drop on him this time. Nope. It's quite hard to get drop attacks on people when you're using a dagger because the dagger is small and the people is large. Actually, the people being large would make it easier. I think he survived that fall. Oh, no, there he is. He's dead. So there should be one more snake out here, who normally gets hit by a boulder, but because uh, the things you change physically in the world in Dark Souls remain changed, which is an important thing, you've got to remember that um, you aren't reloading a save when you come back to life at a bonfire, you, you are actually returning to life in the world itself. Hey, could you step forwards, like, just three feet? It'll be fine, trust me, just come over here for a second. There we go. That's a much more convenient place for you to stand. It's worth noting that the sorceresses are actually a fair bit weaker than the um, Serpentman Warriors. As you could see, she got killed in one hit by that boulder, whereas some of the other ones did not. But the thing about the boulders is that their hitboxes, like they can hit you multiple times even if you're knocked down, and that's true of um, uh, enemies as well. Because as you may have noticed right there, when something is in the animation of getting up from being knocked on the ground, or often when things are on the ground, they are invulnerable to further attack. Has this boulder reset? Yep. So I'm not sure if there's uh, just a trigger in the environment that causes it to switch which side it, the boulders are falling on. Um, but... Yeah, um, it does change periodically. You can't just set it and be like, well, I'm safe now. So with a bit of luck, if I send these out the back side now, I should be able to get to another secret area. Um, but also, there's a lot of sort of implications and curiosities with regards to, you know, if, if once... Uh, humans were able to visit the realm of the gods. Why are they banned now? Why is it not the case anymore? Um, is it just the people in the modern day are too weak to get through Sen's Fortress? Is there something else going on? Will this become obvious later? Yes. So it's worth dropping off that ledge to get onto here. This isn't the secret area I was talking about, it's just another secret area, because this is Dark Souls and there's just an absolute shit ton of secret areas. But um, this gets us a sorcery, which is useful, and the uh, black sorcerer outfit, which will give us a few hints about what Griggs of Vinheim's deal is. This is where we were before, as you can see. This is where the boulders roll, or where the rolders bowl. So I keep forgetting to do this because, but also in my long in-depth let's play, I did this in great detail, but all of the items in the game have little um, 
hints about things, little little descriptions, some of them with more detail than others, as you can see. This is a lot of detail about the sealers, this is a tiny amount of detail about black sorcerers. But effectively, if you piece together things from different sources, um, the black sorcerers are assassins. They're, they're, they're sorcerers trained as assassins who are able to mute the sound of their footsteps and um, do assorted other sorcerer-y things and assassin-y things. And they are round around the world as um, deadly assassins. So if you pay attention to Griggs, he's wearing the uh, black assassin set rather than the, not assassin, black sorcerer set rather than the ordinary sorcerer set, which indicates that he's a more powerful sorcerer than he may be implying, and also uh, gives us some new light to his uh, quest to find Big Hat Logan. He wants to find his tutor, but also Big Hat Logan ran away from his responsibilities. Perhaps he has been dispatched to find and kill Logan since Logan is in a cage in this location. So this leads us back around to where we were. There's a few of these sort of um, internal areas that you can get through, which almost feel like you're um, not sequence breaking or going out of bounds, but there's a lot of areas in games you're not really supposed to be able to get into that players figure out how to get into and then use for speedrunning tricks, that kind of thing. So I personally feel like um, that space just feels like one of those. Oh, hey, my bloodstain. I hope I don't get hit by a boulder. Is that coming this way? No, it's fine. So I have a sneaking suspicion that um, it releases a certain number of boulders per direction. But again, I don't actually know for sure what the logic is. You want to get as close to that as possible without it smashing your nose off of your face so that you have as long as possible to sprint through here before the next one goes. It's a very narrow window and it can take a while to learn the timing. Um, I think it goes clockwise, so or anti-clockwise, so if I turn it this way, it should take the longest possible amount of time to start flying through here again. This, by the way, is the main area where we need to go next, but I'm just heading through here. Hi, Bina. So, with a bit of luck, we should have unlocked a secret area down here now. No, we have not. That's unfortunate. Um, if we send enough boulders down here, this will eventually fill up. It's not a bottomless hole, and then the next one will smash this wall open, which lets us get the uh, gold serpent ring. So, this is time for... I think... This I, th this kind of classic dungeon fantasy thing that I've been talking about with the old Gygax D&D um, games and, um, you know, a dungeon full of traps and, and serpent monsters and so on. I think this it kind of reinforces it because this is the location of one of the most classic Dark Souls monsters, which is also one of those classic dungeon monsters, the Mimic. This is the first Mimic in the game, and people hate the Mimics in Dark Souls because they're extremely gross. Um, they're very freakish looking. The big lolling tongues. And um, also they have a grab attack, which generally people are terrified of because grab attacks do a ton of damage and are difficult to escape. In fact, I did not know you could escape a grab attack uh, until today. Literally today I saw some stuff on Twitter about how if you spam R1 or R or L1, you can actually break a grab and escape from it. Some grabs are not breakable, um, many are. I should really be spamming spells at him, but um, overconfidence is what gets you killed in Dark Souls, and let's not fall in that uh, lift either, because that would also be a problem. Did he get me? No, okay, we're all right. That was the grab animation, so that was incredibly risky. This should be the end of him now. So they're difficult to fight in open areas, um, as it is. They're even harder to fight in close-in areas. But when you kill one, you get the treasure that was in it. They always have guaranteed drops because, you know, they're treasure chests. And this guy drops the lightning spear, which is very useful for getting lightning damage if you don't have another source of it. 
So this is the lift I mentioned previously that we could take to get up. I think it goes down again, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Okay. So as always, Dark Souls is difficult, but I think fair. Um, this is a lift that you can use. It will take you somewhere useful. However, if you don't get off at the first stop, it will crush you into the ceiling. And uh, there is, as you can see, a nice convenient hint that that is the case, because this thing is covered in bloodstains. So... If you've played Dark Souls enough to get to this point of the game and you are still happily treading on things that have bloodstains on without being wary, then I think that that um, is really on you. <laughs> it's kind of your own fault at that point. So I'm going to turn this back the other way again and see if we can get enough boulders in that hole to go get the gold uh, covetous serpent ring, which is a ring that boosts the... Um, percentage drop chance of all items. Well, it, it boosts your item discovery stat, which dictates how likely items are to drop. So there is this kind of um, design-wise adversarial relationship that you figure out as you go through. And um, I don't think it's as difficult as people think it is, but that's my general opinion of Dark Souls across the board. See, you've got perfectly enough time to get through there. This guy's really difficult to kill if you haven't uh, learnt the parry timings. This is kind of like a, you know, you should have learnt this by now kind of situation. So I might die here, actually. <laughs> no, we're good. But you start to see some slightly more um, difficult, difficult appearances of monsters around here. Now, something in my brain is telling me that there's something down here and we can drop down safely. However, I am not sure that that is the case and I don't want to risk it right now. Uh, I, th I feel like parry timings are kind of secretly the proper way to play Dark Souls. You don't have to learn them to play through the game, but um, they will make you look very cool and are also just uh, uh, an effective way to deal with monsters in narrow spaces. This this corridor is a lot more difficult if you can't parry because of this guy and the previous guy, and I'm just going to blast them because I'm a sorceress, so it's kind of what I do. Because there's no point being a sorcerer if you can't completely obliterate someone um, without really even thinking about it. It's just occurred to me that if I want to go back for that thing, I'm going to have to go back through here, aren't I? So... Oh, I forgot about that sorceress. Yep, if she blasts you, you will fall off and die. So I'm going to go kill her and then work my way back down and hopefully not die as I do it. She can take a little while to find. I keep saying she because I always saw them referred to as female on like wikis and stuff when I was first back into this game years ago, but I don't know if there's any reason to actually think that other than that they're just slimmer than the others. As I've said previously, the bow isn't really about doing damage, it's about manipulating the AI, either by moving them around, as you can see, uh, or by um, aggroing them so that they so that they will run to where you want them to be, which is useful for luring them into traps, off ledges, and so on. So we should be able to just sprint through here. Yeah, I do think it's I do think it's that their their like pectoral muscles are a bit differently shaped, so it maybe looks like they they have some kind of breastage, but they absolutely don't. Which, if they are pre uh, if they are females, I do appreciate because. Um, Snake boobs are a very common uh, thing to have in your your lizard people in your fantasy setting. But why would why would female snakes have boobs? You know, they don't uh, they don't nurse their young. And you know the common excuse is often egg sacs, but um, I don't have any way to refute that. Oh, for fuck's sake! I needed one more boulder to smash the wall open. <laughs> The timing of how many boulders it takes to actually knock that hole in is just just arcane to me. It's completely strange. The number of times I've come through here and it's been broken open already, and the number of times when I need to make sure that at least one boulder comes down here, ugh. So yeah, once you've played enough Dark Souls, things like um, 
sends Fortress become a matter of mild exasperation as things don't work out quite how you planned them, rather than extreme fury and frustration, which is what they become for many players who get stuck at this point and give up. Because again, Dark Souls is not about... Um, it's not really about um, forcing you to fail. It's not about destroying you, because you can always keep going. You can always pick up and try again. You only lose at the game of Dark Souls when you give in. It is about perseverance, and it is about... This is... There's nothing down here. This is the same cliffside where the uh, rolling boulder staircase was. But it, it is about this kind of, like, um, you know, you don't lose when you die, you don't lose... But for some reason there's a ladder here. If you fall down that hole before there's... I guess it's so that you can get back up if you fall down there after the hole starts to fill up, but there's nothing down that ladder, it's just how you get back out of this space. Ooh, I hope I don't get hit by a boulder. Which is going to be a constant refrain as we pass through this area. I think we're alright. <laughs> And we're fine. I also like that it actually does show the mechanism but for, how, for how this works. There's all these meaningless cogs and so on, but like, there's these battering rams that um, actually smash them and move them around. That's something that is pretty consistent throughout Dark Souls that I really enjoy, which is that they do actually make some effort. Now, how do I get over there? I can never remember. That might be the other exit from the pit with all the demons in it. Or do you come down from above? I can never... I think that's where the key for Big Hat Logan is, actually, so we'll probably find it eventually. Before then, let's scurry on. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? Because I don't remember at all. Let's just wait for the things. You can roll through there, I think. Uh, are you alright? Okay, I know that you're supposed to be, like, the divine protectors preventing mortals from reaching the realm of the gods. And I know that I'm kind of just schooling you and showing you how much of an easy time I'm having, but this is not the answer! Hello, nice person. Are you a bot or are you... not? That's the question that I've got. As I play through this video game, are you at home doing the same? Oh, balls. <laughs> Okay. So I have bad timing for these last ones because there's all of these um, all of these swinging blades have safe spots you can stand in, but I've always been bad at spotting the the one on the last one, and therefore try to sprint through. But as I said before, it always comes down to your hubris with Dark Souls. As soon as you start to get overconfident, that's what kills you. So now I have to fight all of these things over again. Hey, could you come stand on this conveniently raised platform? Nothing bad will happen to you, I promise. Oh, it didn't trigger. That's weird. I've definitely seen them trigger it by stepping on that in the past. Uh, no, I'm playing on PC. I'm just gonna sp I never use the heavy soul arrows except for this sort of situation. It's kind of a get out of difficult fight free card. But once one of them's down, I can just parry the other easily. Parrying is always more difficult when there's multiples. Anyway, as I said before, if I died again, I wasn't gonna bother wasting any more humanity. Even if. Well, I suppose I said that about getting invaded, since every other time I've died here, it's been, by <laughs> been from invasions, but. Um, that actually brings me back to what I was saying previously, which is that, um, Sorcerer, I think, is just really bad for PvP. I have, um, always had an easy time killing Sorcerers when they invade me. I've also always had a really time, really hard time defending myself as a Sorcerer when people invade me. I think, I don't know if this is just that, uh, you know, yet another level of get good, like, learn to PvP as a Sorcerer, but... I think that there are actual strong mechanical disadvantages to PvPing as a sorcerer. The amount of time it takes for you to get a good target on someone, and the fact that soul arrows are incredibly easily dodgeable. Um, you kind of have to rely on uh, surprising people, 
I know that on my previous save, um, I hit a point where I could kill pretty much any other player in one hit with a soul arrow. So it was really about just tricking them into a position where they couldn't dodge it. But that's harder to do when someone is invading you unexpectedly. I love that you can just hear his footsteps. His like his little snake boy pap, 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 as he as he runs through the hallway. <laughs> I actually find the Snakeman really endearing because I feel like any other fantasy game would have gone for just generic lizard men, you know, the the classic uh, guy with scales and lizard head. But you know, everything in Dark Souls is slightly weirder, slightly more arch than in whatever other game, other fantasy game you might be playing. So I just, <laughs> I just enjoy that um, they went for these bizarre Snakemen with the long, weird, whittly necks. I don't know if like snake people with big serpent heads coming out of the top of their uh, human pattern bodies is a is kind of a thing in folklore anywhere. Um, or if it's a trope maybe in, in some Japanese fantasy, I don't know, but I it's not something I've ever really seen anywhere else, which is one of the reasons why it, uh, this game is endearing to me. One of the hints about the safe places to stand as you go through these are these chips on the uh, on the walkway. It's a way of seeing which way you should go or not go. So that guy just got hit by the boulder, which I <laughs> have been warning you all about every time. Um, unfortunately, I did not warn him. I just murdered him every time. So I think we're, I think we're good on this ledge. Wait, hang on, isn't there a snake man? There's usually a snake man here. I wonder where he went. So that one will probably de-aggro if I go far enough, but also I don't find the sorceress to be as much of a problem sneaking up from behind as the as any other NPC in the game. So yeah, um, unfortunately at that time I died, I was actually very much at the top. That was the last challenge, I think, in all of Sun's Fortress, because when you're playing through this area for the first time, it feels enormous and massive, and it takes you hours and hours and hours to get through it, and it feels incredibly difficult and unfair, but when you know what you're doing, it's really just, like a lot of Dark Souls, it feels a lot bigger than it is, and it's this kind of like tightly coiled four or five corridors. I don't actually need to rearrange this right now, because I'm just going to hurry on and get out of here. The uh, further mysteries of that one staircase can wait until later. So it can be worth trying to snipe that snake. Where, where did it even go? Oh, it's up uh, on the left, I think, so. Right, just this colonnade, and then we can get up to the top, and then we'll be on our way out. Off to fight a boss to unlock a door to go meet God. Which is really everyone's goal in life, I think. Are you gonna- are you good? <laughs> are you alright buddy? Oh hey, so okay. Well, the important thing that this has proved to me is that it is safe to go down here, which is what I was wondering previously. What are we gonna find? I wonder. Oh, it just leads to here. We've been here before. Is he gonna- Is he gonna drop himself off again? What is his deal? But yeah, so we've been to this area previously. I guess it just has two ways of reaching it. He's stuck on there as well. I've never seen them uh I've never seen them path like that actually. Hey, could you hop backwards? I want five hundred souls, thanks. <laughs> oh, okay, he's found another ledge. Whatever. He's stuck there, he can't bother me. It's fine, don't worry about it. So, um, the one main bit of Sen's Fortress that's left I'm not going to do now. I'm going to come back a lot later and take care of it because it's just easier to deal with the uh, demons down there. But there's those three sorceresses guarding this ledge, which guards the horrible pond at the bottom, which is full of demons and a few useful items. None of which we need. What, Snake Sorceress Ledge? Or is that a... The Enigma of Kamigara Fault, or whatever it's called, reference.
Because the thing about that ledge is that if you go and stand on it, it will eventually squeeze you into the shape of a snake person. It does not, um, it sadly does not come with, uh, lightning powers, but, you know, that's not really the issue, is it? One thing I do, my personal headcanon about this is that, um, oh, that's right, I touched on this earlier, but I didn't finish saying. Uh, so, we can, um, conclude that these guys are not the original inhabitants, because we will later find out that they were created by, um, one of the uh, more recent inhabitants of Anor Londo, the empty home of the gods. Spoiler warning. Um, so as we go along, we will find out eventually that the Snake Men were created by Seath the Scaleless, who has been squatting up in the Duke's archive of Anor Londo. See? I nearly fell for my own hubris again. I nearly sprinted through here and got shot with arrows. Uh, well, they have four pecs because they have four arms, which is another one of these incredibly good de uh, Dark Souls details. An organism with four arms should have four pectoral muscles structurally. That's just how that works. So I appreciate that they thought of that. Much like any uh, any monster in a game that has like wings and arms should also have uh, two sets of pectoral muscles. Which is why I used to draw dragons with multiple sets of pectoral muscles when I drew a lot of dragons as a teenager. Draw whatever conclusions from this information that you wish. I will talk no further on it. On it. But yeah, so uh, we eventually find out that these things were created by Seath and they are a very new sort of organism in the world. He's just uh, churning them out as a side effect of his quest for immortality. Well, I mean, anything you draw can have multiple boobs if you're brave enough. I mean, I've definitely seen art of humans with multiple boobs and they don't even have the excuse that, like, anthropomorphic... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Hubris, I forgot about the sorcerer. So, this time, everybody remind me about that fucking sorcerer, okay? Um... What the hell was I talking about? Right, so... Yeah, we find out that these are constructed beings. I mean, yeah, talking about tits doesn't really help when you're trying not to die a lot. One thing I have noticed is that in the in the first couple of these streams, I committed to, um... Not... I committed to not talking whenever I was doing something complicated or difficult, and do you know what? I died a lot less. Um, whenever I was parrying something, I would stop talking. Whenever I was fighting a boss, I would stop talking. It really does boil down to distraction. I do feel like I'm getting the timings on these guys pretty good. I think a lot of players on their, their early runs through Dark Souls don't like to parry very much because it's terrifying. Because um, early on in the game, if you parry and fail, you die. So people don't like to do that very much. But um, once you have enough hit points to survive a failed parry, you really should just learn to do it, because it makes life so much easier. I'm not going to bother waiting for that guy this time. Statistically, if you move on, um, he just gets knocked off by these every time he tries to run across here to catch you, so you don't really need to worry about it. Yeah, um, the animation's getting sort of weird like that. It's, it's almost part of the game, really. Like, you learn to manage them. You can actually dodge attacks by going into a backstab animation at the right moment because um, you're indestructible while it's happening. Um, you can also use it to reposition people so that when you kick them off of your weapon, they fall off of ledges, which is just fun. It's often a lot faster to deal with something that way than to actually fight it. I wonder how many souls were in my bloodstain when I died. If anyone did actually see the number, please don't tell me because I don't want the crushing despair of realising that I lost 20,000 souls. Sunk with 20,000 souls. Or whatever other things people say. Is he gonna get- yes! <laughs> I could watch it all day. <laughs> 
twice. Uh, the unluckiest snake man. Get snaked. So this one will probably aggro again as well, but maybe not. I'm just going to sprint through here and deal with the other guy. It's usually not difficult to bait him into getting smashed by, uh, getting shot by that trap, but um, didn't manage it this time, or indeed any of the other times I've been playing today. So as I've said, I don't like to leave threats alive behind me, but if it didn't aggro, we're fine. I'll just deal with this wiggly corpse as well. Never seen a snakeskin stall before. People usually go for feathers. Or fur. The hitbox for that thing's really awkward. It's very easy to get hit by it on the nose if you're not careful. Which is exactly the same as getting hit by another angle and terrible for your personal health. But yeah, um, since Fortress, it's a lot less difficult than people say it is. Um, it is just this issue of um, confidence and hubris and carefulness. Ha! I remembered that time that I can't parry. Um, I do feel like you should be able to parry his face. I definitely think there's like natural weapons in the game that you can parry. Snake bites just aren't one of them. Anyway, so these guys aren't the natural inhabitants of this place, and I think the fact that they can be lured into their own traps is is almost a kind of evidence of that. Mechani it's there because it's a fun mechanical thing to exist, but... Oh, I knocked that, I knocked that one so far back that it went out of my uh, targeting uh, reticule. Reticle? So when you go up this staircase, the guy on the, the ledge below, down here, can actually aggro if you're not careful, which is why I want to take care of him, because there's nothing more frustrating than getting killed by something that aggroed you couldn't see, and that's crept up behind you when you're trying to carefully cross a bridge covered in dangerous uh, technology. Giant Swinging Blades. It's the latest in home protection technology, says Edgar Allan Poe, who has been paid to say it on his horror podcast. Imagine the world we could have had, huh? Actually, Edgar Allan Poe's horror podcast would be a pretty good title for this uh, stream archive. I'll have to remember that. I do love the design. They're so good. They're really pretty. I think I would. I would have a. I would have a figurine of one of these on a shelf somewhere. If I were the per kind of person to collect uh, figurines other than the ones I paint personally, you didn't remind me. <laughs> uh, guys, you said you'd remind me about this fucking snake. So now we enter wizard battle. I win at wizard battle. So, if I look carefully, we should be safe here. And I was correct. We're all good. Oh, that was close. I nearly forgot about that one. <laughs> oh, see, there's always one more thing. Um, no matter how careful you are, there's always one final trap, one final trick, one final nasty little thing that the game designers have hidden for you to find by standing on. So I'm going to assume that that's correct and not drop down here. At the very least, there isn't a convenient snake. In fact, that's probably the same shaft that the snake man dropped down previously. Be wary of right. Definitely a good message to have. Um, in life, generally. Let's not talk about that one, though. So here we are, finally at the top of Sen's Fortress. It only took us, like, eight tries, I think. What was that, like three because of hubris, three because I got murdered by someone, and the others I don't remember. Before I do anything else, I'm going to dive off of here. Fuck! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. So, I don't know if you saw in the split second before, as we ricocheted off the um, parapet and fell into the void, 
but that was where the bonfire is. A lot of people don't find it on their first run through Sen's Fortress and they think that you have to run all the way through the fortress and then fight the boss. <laughs> but in fact, that is where the bonfire is. Glimpsed out of the corner of your eye as you tumble shameless, shamefully, shamefully into the void, bouncing off bits of masonry as you go. Um, so let's try that again, and this time, instead of rolling to where the bonfire is, we will step carefully, which is what I have been saying the whole time through. It's a difficult game, but it's not an unfair game. It is just an unforgiving game. It is a game that will punish you for mistakes and is utterly merciless. So what do I do? I get overconfident, and I try to be showy, and I fall in the hole. Actually, hubris is a pretty good theme for this game, quite apart from the fact that um, it's one of the most common causes of player death. Also, I'm slightly disappointed that none of these snakes have dropped their, dropped their swords. They have a decent drop rate, so I'm surprised that none have happened so far. It must be because I'm not human. But, um, yeah, so... Um, I think one of the nastiest tricks this game plays is that the bonfire in this area is so hard to find, because people do find this zone very hard to get through on their on their early runs. Um, and um, the finding of a bonfire is such a kind of a important mark for a zone in Dark Souls. Finding a bonfire is this moment of relief as you realise that you won't lose any further progress if you fuck up. You can stop and rest and no longer worry so much about, about um, getting through a zone. You can, you can find a new point from which to safely explore. So the fact that there's a boss at the top of this zone and um, the bonfire very close to that boss is completely hidden is kind of nasty. I think it's the only um, bonfire like that in the game where it's... There are other missable bonfires, but very few of them are so tied to the critical path. It's also nice to still hear a lot of bells ringing. It's cool to me that this game still has a kind of a, a big enough following, but, um, you know, it's not so much on the Prepare to Die edition anymore, but on, on, on this new edition you can still find people um, successfully ringing Bells of Awakening as they play through, whether that's for the first time or not. You can definitely hear that one moving. The sorceresses are also parryable, but um, it's a lot more risky, so this is going to be a hubris. This is going to be a hubris day. Oh my god. Um, hmm. I'm starting to get a bit irritated by this, actually, so I'm just going to focus. And um, you can imagine some pleasant background music if you like, or you can uh, come back in five minutes when, when I'll be at the top of the tower, or you can just watch me go through slightly more focusedly because I'm slightly embarrassed by how much I'm dying here.
as I said, if you touch them even slightly, even when they're stationary, you get knocked over. And if it knocks you forwards, it just kills you. Note that my casting time is a lot faster than theirs, so the casting time and recovery time together is enough to just spam to death. Also, this guy warned me and you guys didn't, so... So as you can see, if you're paying attention and focusing, you can pretty easily just um, sprint through the entire thing without much trouble. And this is what I meant to do. Drop down here to grab this bonfire nice and neatly. I should use two of these and kindle it up. So this is also that thing I keep saying about, like, if I'm not talking, I'm better at Dark Souls. Some part of my brain- I guess, like, the uh, speech part and the game playing part are not totally separate, so I can't necessarily unhinge one from the other entirely and just zip through. So, um, yeah, I do like the anatomy of the Snake Men, personally. I think they're very pleasing to look at, but also you can see up their skirts, so you can very definitely tell that they have no visible external genitalia. However, uh, with reptiles, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. They uh, could easily have a gonadal slit or whatever it's called, which hides any form of gonads in it. The real question is, do they in fact have hemipenes? Oh, that's not- you can't- no, that's mine. You can't do that. That's my trick. Ooh, the Balder Side Sword. That's quite a good weapon that a lot of people enjoy using. We should be able to parry this guy pretty easily. I still love the kind of like back alley knifing animations of when you kill someone with a dagger. <laughs> Just slashy, 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 slashy. Like a mobster with a razor blade in the 1930s. This is the Firestone Plate Ring, which is uh, one of the various plate rings which massively boost your defences for one specific thing. We already have the Steel Plate Ring, which I believe I'm wearing, as you can see. Um, the main threat that we need to be wary of around here is the guy throwing big bombs, which you will have heard exploding occasionally around me as I sprint, sprint back and forth carelessly. So we're going to go kill him before we explore the rest of this area, which is... Just general good practice, if you ask me. 
Also, see that guy down there? That's the second giant. You can actually snipe him from far away. If you pour arrows into him for a while, he will eventually die and drop, I think, 2,000 souls, which is a good number of souls, but not a huge amount of souls. Also, there's another boulder hiding over here for us to utterly destroy. So, this always feels to me like there must be an illusory wall, and people love to write illusory wall ahead over here because it super looks like there's an illusory wall here, but there absolutely is not. However, there are some useful architectural hints as to what's going on um, narratively at this point. This will be more obvious when we go up to the top of here, which is where the boss is. However, note the difference in the stonework. That stonework over there, this stonework here, and compare it to the stonework of the Undead Parish way back over there. Um, this is a theory I have personally, but I talk about a great deal in my old Let's Play, but which is on YouTube for anyone who doesn't already follow me over there, which I do these cool in-depth Let's Plays that I think are worth uh, checking out, so why don't you do that? Now, I haven't found the cage key yet. Where the hell is the cage key? Um, well, when we find it, we'll go back down and unlock Big Hat Logan from his Big Hat home. Gotta be careful here because the bomb dropping guy will just throw them down at you wherever you are. The real trick is to never let this guy draw his sword, but it's not difficult. And yeah, that is a actually that is a pretty good view. Um This guy ain't lying. That is a gorgeous view. So we can see some of the dark root forest here. Over there there's the uh the undead parish. Belfry, where we rang the bell, and out there, these successive circles of the kingdoms of humanity. The last kind of, well, I guess the first kind of home of humans here at the foot of Anor Londo, which is up there, which is where the gods live, and where we will be visiting them a bit later. And see that guy glaring down at us menacingly? He's the one who's been throwing bombs at us for the last few minutes. So naturally his time is up and we're going to murder him. But before we do that, I just want to check and see if this is where the uh, where the key is, because I do remember where the key is, I just cannot get at it. Apparently not. Huh, I thought there was a way down here somewhere. So this is the summon sign for the guy who helps you with this boss. This is an NPC, he's only available here. Um, he doesn't help you with any other uh, bosses as you go through the game. Hmm. How do you get the key? I might have to look that up, because I do want to progress Big Hat Logan's plotline. If you don't rescue him from the cage, he just sits in there forever. But um, if you do rescue him from the cage, you can get his extra cool sorceries. Which are extremely useful for being an extra cool sorcerer. So this guy's pretty dangerous when he starts spamming attacks, but after that he has this really long recharge time before he can do anything again, so you can just edge round him blasting out his soul arrow. Um, this is a really good opportunity to kill him with blood loss if you happen to have a bleed weapon, which tragically on this run I do not, even though I really would like to. It's also a good opportunity to heal up, which I should have done but didn't. You can't backstab what, the giant? No, giants are too big, you can't reach them. Actually, no, there might be a, um, there might be a, uh, poise break killing animation, now that you mention it. I, I just, I do not remember. So that over there is the boss of this zone, the Great Iron, Iron Golem, which we will be fighting shortly with Iron Tarkas's help. And which is a really easy, uh... Oh, is the is the is the the key down with the scythe? I mean, I know where it is. Well, see, it's a golem, so it can just stand there forever. But the main thing I want to point out is that archway. Uh, well, the advantage of golems is that you don't have to pay them anything. It's actually like a huge worker rights issue in in fantasy worlds, is that you can just not pay a golem. But see how that archway is bricked up with the same brickwork brickwork of Sen's fortress, and. Um, the brickwork behind it is much cleaner. This ties into this whole thing I have about, you know, besides it. Oh, I'm thinking of the Bardish then, which is down in the, the, the underground hole at the bottom of this place. Um, yeah, so 
bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a few things for us to grab around here on the rooftops. That, um, that giant over there is actually the one who's been dropping rocks into the giant trap mechanism we saw previously. So I love that, um, like, they took care to show how this place could work logically as a mechanism. There's all this giant mechanisms and you think, well, how can this keep running? You know, the springs would run down, there's no windmills powering it, no, no water mills powering it. It's all giant power. There's just an immortal giant squatting on the roof forever. And um, presumably there's a winding lever that he uses to keep the gears going somewhere around here as well. And just an infinite pile of rocks for him to drop down. I wonder if there's another secret giant somewhere who's gathering the rocks at the other end and bringing them back up again. So, here's a guy. So this is just, it's just a guy. Completely normal guy. Completely not weird at all. I'm finished. We're both on the brink, you see. End of story. You bloody fool. So this guy is actually wearing, I think, the armour of the Bereniki Knights, which we've slain a few of already. Let me give you a nibble of advice. Don't even consider visiting Anor Londo. Not in your state. For a century they've tried and failed. The Night King Rendor, Black Iron Tarkas, and even Logan himself. You won't stand a chance, you'll be eaten alive. But go along if you wish, if only to deepen your despair. So despite the passing of eons, there are there are still these myths that you can reach an Orlando and and find the gods if you ascend through Sen's fortress. But um yeah, this guy sells some good stuff. He's got the, the other two stone plate rings for magic and lightning resistance, he's got uh, the Katarina armor and the steel armor set and the boulder armor set and he's got a few weapons which are cool and these are just great he's uh the only place you can buy these i think actually no the giant blacksmith sells some of these but they're just useful usefully accessible upgrade materials i'll be fine don't worry about it so, um, all of these people have been coming to this place to try and fulfill the old legend and see if they can they can reach the realm of the gods, all for their own reasons. This guy mentions that his is conceit, which I assume is because, you know, this is the proving grounds for those who are worthy to visit the home of the gods itself. So, if you think you're a great and mighty warrior, truly that is the... Uh, oh, here's the cage key. Truly that is the uh, greatest challenge imaginable, so... To test yourself against it and fail would be uh, crushing for some kind of mighty knight. I wish you could dodge cancel out of that. So the reason why I'm going to go back down and take care of this now is because um, it's difficult to get back down here once you go to Anor Londo itself. Um, well, it's not that difficult, but it's it's more irritating than it needs to be. Uh, unless you fight all the way through to the end of the Anor Londo zone, which is when you unlock the ability to teleport via bonfires. Which is extremely useful to have. But um, I'm just going to do this this way because there is also a shortcut. Which is the other thing Dark Souls loves a great deal. Fucking hell. Also, that item down there is the sniper crossbow. Which, for completionism's sake, I do have to go grab. <laughs> Which I think the best way to get it is to drop off of that bridge. Also, there's an item around here that I forgot as well. So, those cages that um, Big Cat Logan is trapped in. Oh, hey, an armoured skeleton. One of these, uh, one of the few armoured corpses in the game. So, uh, yeah. Games have this weird obsession with getting players to willingly put themselves in cages they can't possibly escape in situations where that's an extremely stupid idea. Why this is the case I do not know, but uh, it's always bothered me, because at the end of um, Valve's game, the Valve's very popular super cool game where you do stuff, um, Half-Life, at the end of Half-Life, there is this uh, 
Half-Life 2, there is this big cage that you can uh, lock yourself in, and it's the only way to progress. And the game is very kind of like, you're going to have to do this incredibly stupid thing because you have to do this incredibly stupid thing. And I always just thought, surely there must be some other way. You know, like there's there's other methods for traversing this environment than lo willingly locking yourself in a cage that will allow your opponent to uh, entrap you easily. Nevertheless. So this guy is actually one of the um, heroes that uh, the merchant we just met mentions. He talks about these kind of heroes of old who've tried to get through here and failed. Black Eye and Tarkus. Um, this guy, who I believe is the Hero Knight Rickett. Hero Prince Rickett, something like that. He drops his rapier, which might be useful for us at, to us as a dex weapon as we go. Boulder Side Sword has E and B scaling, which isn't amazing. Um, 80 damage. Our heavily upgraded dagger does a decent amount more at the moment. The question is whether we want to spend a bunch of stuff upgrading. Oh, Half-Life uh, 2. At the end of Half-Life 2, when you're in the Citadel, um, right at the very end, you sort of find that you can't progress any further through the structure, and the only way to go is to climb inside the sort of, like, cage things that transport lobotomized brain slaves around, and it's like, why would you ever do that? Why would you step inside that? There are other methods for traversing the interior of this structure. Divine Blessing, an item of which there are only about three in the entire game, which fully heals you and restores any, uh, status ailments. So there's just some useful things in this, in this tower. But there is this idea that people have been throwing themselves at this tower for, um, at this, at this fortress for, for centuries, trying to get through to go visit the gods, for the reasons that you go visit the gods. He knows how they work, but he also knows that they are... They pretty much exclusively contain lobotomized brain slaves and um, are in fact... I believe you can see them, like, carrying them around through, like, horrible uh, extraction procedures in the backgrounds of the, of the Citadel levels. Um, I think it's incredibly unwise to lock yourself into essentially a metal coffin that will put you through a meat thresher because you've seen it put other people through meat threshers. It's just kind of... Uh, like, you know, maybe he's different, but, like, I just personally would not make that decision. I love the comic timing of that, actually. <laughs> personally, I would not make this incredibly stupid decision, I say, locking myself in a cage. So, these two cages go up and down, and they are, and they are a lift that will get you back and forth, but, um... I actually prefer to hop back in and go back up again because the two drop down next to each other which means that if you um go up and down you can um take the other lift which i probably should have just done in the first place but i can never remember which one's which now if i can trigger this right i should be able to send that down and take the other one which means that i will be right next to that snake man instead of slightly in front of that snake man which makes him much much easier to fight um, although he did of course throw himself into the void for my benefit but Sometimes areas reload when you um, traverse between them in this way. Not always. Some areas do, some areas don't. Uh, generally speaking, areas are only supposed to refresh when you rest at a bonfire, but if you get far enough away from a zone, it, it all respawns. Um, normally I would uh, wait and, and shoot this with arrows, but um, I'm just going to try and see if I can... Uh, kill it with spells a bit more easily. Fortunately, unlike a snake person, I can time my shots, whereas the snake person is not smart enough to try and fire between the blades. Ho 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 ho! Truly, I am the most intelligent person in this universe. Ah, interesting. See, this wall has repaired. <laughs> Actually, there is a weird inconsistency in this game between what does and doesn't repair. Um, if you rest at a bonfire or if you pass through an area and then a different area. Are we good or is this thing going to try and crush me? I think we're okay. So I need to rearrange the thing to kill that snake man and smash the wall open so that I can go through another zone, so that I can come back, so that I can rescue Big Hat Logan, so that I can get the best sorceries. Potentially it could be worth even... Um, heading all the way back down 
to the animal, to the uh, fire link shrine bonfire and um, getting uh, all of his good sorceries now rather than later so that I can actually use them in Anor Londo, which will make my life a bit easier up there. Nice zoom in there on the old butt crack, but as you can see up there, skirt, there's just, there's nothing, there's just the void. Which is really what we all want to have up our skirts, really. So, what I think I will do is I'm going to fight my way back to... Well, I'm going to go rescue Big Hat Logan and then I will fight my way back down to Firelink Shrine, which will not take very long, luckily. And then I will be going to uh, do the other thing, which is teleport right back to the bonfire I was at previously. Does this go clockwise or anti-clockwise? Um... I'm really not sure. So what I'm going to do is point it out the back where it won't hurt anybody. <laughs> that should give me plenty of time to go rescue Big Hat Logan. But um, before you unlock the ability to warp via bonfires, there is this useful ability of... Um, if you just time it right, you can very easily uh, travel around. Huh, I didn't think you'd be able to hit me. You can very easily get around by um, just making sure that you don't rest at bonfires so that you can teleport back to the bonfire you want to be at via a homeward bone. Uh, buddy? Guy? Pal? Okay. Oh, hi! Hey! Uh, we are in Sen's Fortress. I have completed Sen's Fortress and uh, got out the top. However, I've come back down to rescue Big Hat Logan now that we found the... Uh, cage key that um, will free him. He's this mushroom looking guy. Oh heavens. Thank you. I'm saved. And I love to resume my travels. But I must log a few things first and I owe you a favor. I will return to Firelink Shrine. Speak with me then so that I may impart my sorcery. Cool. Sounds legit. Uh, I think he doesn't tell us anything else right now. Also, I think you can open all of these, but none of the rest of them do anything. This one's got an item in. This is a mood, isn't it? Also, there's something funny about the idea of a soul of a hero being on the guy who got locked in a cage and died. Like, yeah, good job, guy. <clears throat> Extremely heroic behaviour. For some reason, I always think one of these is a lift, but I don't think any of them actually are. But regardless, the uh, best trick for me to do now is to go down to Firelink Shrine. What does this say anything? Everyone's just saying praise the sun. So what I'm going to do is um, head back now to Firelink Shrine, buy some kind of super cool sorceries from noted sorcery purveyor Big Hat Logan. And then, uh, oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, I forgot that they reset. Oh dear. So I'm going to have to come and get this bloodstain regardless, because that's 19,000 souls and I need that for buying things with. Um, God, what's the easiest way? Probably to go up and then take the lift back down again, and then go up and around. I'm actually going to equip a Ring of Sacrifice, so that I don't have to worry about uh, losing all my shit again. But this is that thing I keep saying about hubris, like, I know where everything is, therefore I think I'm immortal, and then I just get smashed to bits. Also, uh, the giant on the rooftop who throws the giant boulders does respawn, I think. Not the bol uh, the bomb thrower. So we have to be careful as we go, because he will resume his deviant behaviour. Hmm, actually, I didn't pick up the sniper crossbow either. Even though I'm not going to use it, I like to grab everything. Um... I really thought we'd be through the fortress by now, but oh well. Oh, hang on, I want the other the other lift, because that snake man will have respawned as well, which means I want to appear next to him, rather than in front of him, where he can kill me. Um, it's not necessarily permanent stun lock, but it is basically, nine times out of ten, if you get hit by one arrow and you're not already moving, it will still kill you.
See, if we do it this way, I can possibly parry him. I can get my camera in the right position. And not get murdered by various things that are going to kill me. Such as that lightning bolt. Oofty, oofty, oofty. Um, hmm. It might even be safer just to work my way back down manually and kill everything on the way. Fortunately, this is probably one of the only times I'm going to need Rings of Sacrifice, so we can just freely use the lot of them. Do I have a, another normal one? No, only the fancy ones. Oh well. Yep, yeah, I know. Oh, oofed. But because I had the Ring of Sacrifice, I didn't lose my my souls. So if I drop by stack, I can't. I can drop to that one, and then from that one, I can't. No, the other ones are over there. I can't just drop from here. Hmm. What's the best option? I guess I'll try this one more time. See, the thing is, I don't know if I have enough um, hard souls banked in my inventory to be able to actually get away with just popping them to buy things from Big Cat Logan. So that's my big risk that I go all the way back down there and then can't actually buy anything from him because I think Soul Spear costs 40,000. Um... I think he sells, I think homing soul mass is like some other number of thousands. Okay, let's see what happens this time. Because that uh, that sorcerer can shoot into both of these cages, which means I need to move immediately. Which means if I'm fast, maybe I can um, get under the... No, I know, I should have done this in the first place. If I go here, then I can't be shot by the sorceress because I'm under the thing. And then I can parry this guy, probably, if I let him get a bit closer. There we go, much more safely done. Now, where the fuck was my bloodstain, though? Where did I die? Oh god, does anyone remember where I died? I got shot in the back by a tr by three arrows. I think that was up there, maybe. So, let's not be hubristic. Let's be nice and careful. We've got 20,000 souls on the line. Unfortunately, once we get through here, we'll be up in Anor Londo, which is much simpler. Although we will, of course, have to face the dreaded Umbrella Archers on the uh, dreaded Bastard Buttress. Yeah, um, it kind of arcs in a weird way. You sort of just learn to mitigate it as you play through the game. You just get used to shooting in the correct places to hit things. There's a lot of guys with weird hitboxes as well. Okay, so it wasn't this one that killed me. Which one killed me? Ah, this one. Wait, hang on. How did I die here? Where the hell was the... Oh, that's right. I ran through here and then over this one from behind and it shot me in the back. That's what happened. Because I forgot that they reset if you get too far away from them. I believe it's distance-based rather than time-based. Fortunately, we have a nice safe shortcut from here. We can just drop off of here. Continue ignoring the demons at the bottom that I'm not going to deal with. Yeah, um, but also there's something to do with like the position of your body that affects it as well. If I just sprint through here, these shouldn't be able to catch me with a bit of luck. Also, one of them might die from the arrows, which is always hilarious. Very important that I remember not to rest at any bonfires, because then I won't be able to shortcut back with the uh, homeward bone. Homeward Bone sounds like a sex position from the Old West, which is a joke that it's beneath me, and I already regret saying it. Uh, uh, Speed-wise, I'm not sure. I think there are a few things, but um, Skeleton Wheels are the only ones that are like really significantly visibly faster than you in a way that is terrifying. I think on my most recent, like, personal playthrough of this game, the skeleton wheels were really the only thing I had any trouble with. <laughs> oh god, those things are a nightmare. But that is because I chose to rest at the new Vamos uh, bonfire that they have added in uh, the remake. Uh, remaster. Not remake. 
which, as I think I talked about on a previous stream, is kind of a nasty trap for new players. <laughs> um, it's one of the, the only harmful bonfires. By which I mean, if you rest there, you will be stuck on the other side of a room full of skeleton wheels that you usually can't deal with at the time you find the room for the first time. And uh, it's just a whole big awkward situation, really. Also, note that Laurentius has gone. That's because he's disappeared off to the uh, Great Swamp. Tragically, as we saw last time. Oh, hello again. I was waiting to tell you. Master Logan has returned, and he tells me that he has you to thank. Well, we are both in your debt now. Thank you, sincerely. He's just over there. Go along and have a chat. Oh, hello. I appreciate the attention, but you really should speak to Master Logan. He's he's one of my favourite characters, and I usually never choose to bring about his death, but I absolutely did not kill him. I merely told... He asked me about a cool pyromancy I had, and I told him where I found it, which is what instigates the chain of events that leads to his death. But if I ask my friend to buy me a packet of crisps on her way back from work, and so she goes to the shop that the crisps are at, and in doing so is run over on a road she would not previously have been walking on. I'm not culpable for her death. There you are. I was expecting you. As promised, I will share my sorcery. So, here we have a whole bunch more sorceries to buy. I really want Soul Spear, because it's ridiculously powerful. Magic Weapon is also very powerful. The, the buff, damage buff from using Magic Weapon um, on an unenchanted weapon is greater than having leveled up um in the like magic scaling up upgrade chain of of like weapon upgrades uh but you have to buff your weapon with it which means it has to be in your left hand and i like to have my shield in my left hand at all times if you um in uh, later dark souls games you get more item slots so you can actually fit things in there i'm actually gonna i don't want the items you can make out of quailag's soul so i'm just gonna pop this that's eight thousand Let's see if I can get up to 40,000. Uh, I need this, I don't need this. Well yes, but I only know that because I have played through this game previously a bunch of times. Um, on someone's first playthrough of this game, they don't know that if you tell Laurentius where to get a cool sorcery, he'll die. You really are very diligent. I quite understand. Study is invigorating. So I've mostly been kind of playing through this. Revealing uh, revealing the things that I can reveal because I have played it a ton of times, but um, not revealing the things that someone... Or, but making the decisions that someone, someone would make on their first run through. Actually, does he have any uh, interesting things he can tell us? Talk is not an option, apparently. Which is weird, I really thought it was. Anyway, so finally, finally we're all done with this place, so let's zip back up to the top and go fight the boss. So I'm going to make myself human, because we want to summon in an ally, because having an ally is always really powerful for fighting a boss in this game, but having uh, an ally when you're a sorcerer is even more impressive, because uh, it just gives you the opportunity to just blast away with no consequences, which we all love to do. Additionally, there's a special trick that works in this, like there's an int intentional trick, the devs intended it to happen that you can get with this particular ally, um, where he essentially cuts your opponent off at the knees and uh, makes him crash to his death. Which is another thing we all love to do when we get the chance. Oh, I don't have the stats to use it yet. Oh, how much more intelligence do I need? That's 36, what am I at? Uh, 27? Oh, okay, so Soul Spear's gonna be a while away. <laughs> My bad. I always forget that you have um, intelligence requirements for your spells as well as everything else, but we will probably hit 36 in an Londo, so it's still to our advantage to have it now. So we're going to go wake up Iron Tarkus, who was mentioned by the uh, by the crestfallen. He's not the Crestfallen Knight, that's the guy at Phylink Shrine, but the, the depressed warrior up there who happens to be wearing the Bereniki armour and be near to some Bereniki knights. Which perhaps implies that he was their leader. Um, and he has he has given up on his, his goals, unlike the rest of them, who forged on and became hollow. Although, giving in to despair is kind of what turns you hollow. 
ultimately, so who knows. Anyway, uh, this probably won't happen, but uh, in this boss fight, if you and uh, Iron Tarkus... Oh, maybe that guy doesn't respawn. That giant. Hmm. I wonder if I can parry an arrow. Nope. Maybe this guy can't even draw a sword. I'm just going to bully him for a bit. I was hoping I could get him to move past that pillar so he would drop off the back, but oh well. Anyway, don't bully. It's, uh, bad. Is he up here? No, okay. So that guy doesn't respawn. I really thought he did. You can actually smash these with your with your weapon, which is just hilarious to me. He was throwing these at you and they exploded, but you smash them open and there's nothing in them. So perhaps... Maybe he's a pyromancer. Some kind of pyromancer wizard uh, giant. The fire was in him all along. Anyway, we get Tarkus over here. He is wearing one of the heaviest armor sets in the game, with one of the heaviest shields and one of the heaviest weapons. His whole deal is that he is an incredibly heavily armored knight. And um, basically, if he attacks the uh, right, I think it's the right knee of the golem when it is near the edge, um, then at a certain point, if you, wail, if you wail enough damage onto that specific body part, it just drops the fuck off the edge. He falls over backwards because you've tripped him up. Um, and that's like something the boss is like programmed in on purpose and actually intended rather than some kind of glitch or whatever. So this is again one of... Again, the sorcerer just finds it really easy to fight bosses. Um, it is... a class that kind of just destroys bosses easily. But it is especially the case with bosses like this that are big and slow and don't really do a lot. Because you can just spam him to death from a safe distance. Of course, if you get too close to the edge and you get hit, that's uh, that's all for you. Time to go take a seat on the bleachers, as they say in America, probably. Perhaps my American followers can answer that question. Oh, that's weird. He didn't take any damage from that hit. But yeah, so it's pretty easy to fight this guy, and if you su if you summon Tarkus, he can basically solo it for you. <laughs> he will just um, beat it to death because he does so much damage. But uh, if you fight him without without assistance and you just spam spells, it's easy. But yeah, so I was talking about this doorway previously. I believe that at one point, before the undead parish and the undead burg and all of these mortal realms existed, at some point in primordial time, well not primordial time, but eons ago, you know the gods walked the earth and humans could could ascend through that gateway and through that gate could visit the realm of Anor Londo and at some point Sen's fortress was built to prevent humans from doing that to prevent people from being able to get up here and go visit the gods unless they were worthy and then at some further point this was bricked up this nice convenient access way into Anor Londo was ended and, and blocked. And so even even those who follow the ancient legends and, and work their way up here and even, even successfully overcome the many dangers of Sen's fortress itself, here we find this ancient stonework. But pay attention, the stonework of Anor Londo is this kind of beautiful sculpted marble. This is the stonework of Sen's fortress in filling the doorways. So if you compare these two together, you can make a reasonable assumption that it was blocked off by the same people or using the same supplies um, as actually built Sen's Fortress itself. So perhaps this was ultimately a kind of more to do with the understandings of like worship and like the mythic idea of actually going to visit the gods rather than um, something put into place by the gods themselves, because otherwise, why would it look like this instead of that? The divine architecture itself is inviolable, that's why it's still there, whereas the human architecture crumbles slowly over time. And also, yeah, just imagine the despair of reaching the top only to find that the doorway's been bricked up and you cannot ascend to an Orlando itself. However, we are built different, so we can do this.
I love this moment because the tone of Dark Souls up until this point has, like the visual tone has been very clearly one of, if I talk to that guy, he just silently takes me back down again, uh, which I don't want to do right now. These, these things are actually called flying demons, which is interesting because um, the demons are positioned as like oppositional to the gods. Um, after they were birthed from the bed of flame, Gwyn led the last of his silver knights down to fight them. Um, which I believe resulted in them becoming scorched black, and that is the origin of the black knights themselves, who are now hollow scorched black suits of armour with nothing but ashes inside, um, eternally wandering mad. Which is a thing that will happen to you too if you're not careful. Why can't I cast my spell? That's odd. Hmm, I've never seen that happen before. Oh, I just run out, I guess. Oh, of course, I threw them all at the boss. I am dumb. <laughs> so, once again, these guys are pretty easy to fight. <laughs> There's just a ton of them up here, and they're these sort of, like, giant sentinels. We know that giants are associated with the gods, um, and that the gods themselves are giants, but there is a sort of race of people who are the giants, which is not the same thing as the gods who are merely much larger than humans, but not technically giants, they're just large. Um, and the connection between the, the giants who sort of compulsively serve the gods and um, humans who don't, and uh, the gods themselves who are giant-sized but not giants. These guys actually have a complete damage protection shield. That um, shield from the front will always block all damage of an attack if, if you hit the shield instead of him. As I've said before, the hitboxes in Dark Souls are usually really tight, so you can um, you can get away with sneaking damage past a shield, and you can also, um, you know, if you screw up, then you just get hit and die, which isn't what I meant to say, but uh, it's also true. That's a fascinating dream to have had, and probably speaks to their mental state. <laughs> I'm no therapist, but um, that's a dream with connotations. So, here we are in the realm of the gods, and I will probably ramble about this place and what it means and what it represents, and that beautiful moment as you finally crest there and you reach this goal that you've been striving towards the entire game, and the what I was mentioning previously, the sort of visual tone changing from one of decay and despair to one of inviolable splendour, which is a good line, even if I do say so myself. Um, we'll go in there and rest at the bonfire, and that will probably be, probably be all for today, but before we do that I just want to grab a few items that are lying around, and also be extremely spoilery, because as I've said before, I am... Uh... Oh, I've had that dream a lot as well, actually, uh, which is often tied to dreams uh, or is part of a dream where I'm just desperately trying to find a bathroom and um, like like I'm out in public and I really need the bathroom and then it's like oh we don't have a you know we don't have a bathroom in this restaurant so it sucks to be you I guess then eventually finding one in like some weird exposed location like a clothes shop or something which might be revealing too much of my psyche to you guys I timed that badly but it was fine Fun thing about these enemies is that you can actually get in under their shield and just hit them uh, from inside their shield. They're one of the only shielded enemies that's large enough to do that. Their shields don't behave like the shields of any other entity in the game. <laughs> so if you are brave enough, you can actually just close with them and stand inside their shield and then they can't hit you. Like this, if you stand here, you'll be actually inside the shield and then it uh, is why they have that hop backwards move, to be honest. Also, they're pretty dangerous. I should avoid dying because... If I die, it'll be back to Sen's Fortress, which is not where we want to be. But it's fine. Uh, anyway, so... I love this statue. Fucking... I love this, this ridiculous power pose. This is Gao. He's a boss we'll be fighting later. He is the executioner of the gods. He is their... He is their guy who kills stuff for them, and he's just got this ridiculous power pose. So uh, yeah, massively spoilery, but um, all of these all of these um, guards are actually illusions. They're not really here. 
This is something that will be talked about later on as we go, but um, I'm just going to hit this and then blast him from a, some distance away because, you know, now that we're in a big room, why fight him properly? Also, you got to watch out for that spin kick. It uh, locks, <laughs> essentially locks on from a distance and is incredibly dangerous. When you break its poise and get it to stagger like that is a good time to heal. Um, people are really scared of these things. I think it's just because they look gross. Um, they're not very difficult to fight. They have like, I think they only have three attack animations. They have that big swing, they have a, uh, a kick, they have the spin kick, and then they have the grab animation where they grab you and eat you. <laughs> That's the kick, everybody. And that's the other kick. I should probably just get behind him and kill him, but it's fine, don't worry about it. Anyway, so these, uh, that probably isn't an illusion, but um, all of these sentinel guards, I think they're giant sentinels, I think they're called, or they might just be giant soldiers, giant guards, something like that. Anyway, they are, um, they're illusory, they're not really there. Oof, that was close. Uh, I should definitely have remembered to heal up before. That was incredibly lucky that I did not die. See, that's how you know you get the real deal with me as a streamer. Like, I don't be like, oh, that was skill. I knew exactly how much damage I would take, so I knew it was fine. It's like, no, uh, no, I got through that by the skin of my teeth. That was just lucky. So, uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Right, yeah, so um, this uh, whole zone of splendor, it is incredibly important to the themes of the game and the story that you understand this kind of like emergence into this inviolable beauty, this this eternal divine architecture, and um, it's a lie. It's all a lie. Because you don't know this yet, but as we go through the game you will realise everybody is lying to you. Nobody has your best interests at heart. And um, well, except Laurentius, who sadly is now going to go become a skeleton, but um, yeah, so you just have to bear in mind that sometimes when people tell you you have a glorious destiny, what they actually mean is that you will die painfully for their benefit. Anyway, let's have a chat to this nice lady. Well, you are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anorlanda, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Grimm's old keep, exit here. It heads straight yonder. If you are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit you. What follows thereafter depends upon you. So this is the first Firekeeper we've seen since Firelink Shrine and, uh, well, since Firelink Shrine went dark, because of course the Pale Lady in the Great Swamp was also a Firekeeper, so that means we can finally reinforce our Estus Flask. However, I believe if we forget to do that, mm. oh sorry, if we do that... What am I? Well, I am the Keeper of the Bonfires. If not for me, what beacon would there be in this lost city? A gatekeeper and a guide. That is my calling. I believe her name is something like the Dark Moon Knightess or something. It's a really cool name. And I love the brass armor set as well. It's a nice armor set. But yeah, so if I use that uh, Firekeeper Soul, I believe I will not be able to restore the Firekeeper of Firelink Shrine later. So we're going to hang on to it. The bonfires attended by the keepers are special. They are linked to one another, and their flames never die. Yet never shall the keepers of these flames meet. It's actually something about the um, the fire keepers that is interesting. People wonder about, you know, you go around lighting bonfires, so how is it that you can be, like, how, how is it that every bonfire needs to have a firekeeper to remain lit? And of course, once the firekeeper of Firelink Shrine is dead, you can't relight that fire. But what you might notice is that uh, every, every fire you light and it says bonfire lit, that fire already had an ember in it. There's a little tiny lick of flame at the base of the sword that you can just about see. Which means that you are in some way rekindling these bonfires. You are you are boosting them back into existence, but they had not in fact gone out. Which itself implies that because these bonfires are linked, those bonfires are supported by fire, fire keepers elsewhere, and so long as some kind of core bonfire remains lit, they all do. Which itself is linked to the sort of metaphysical rules of this world, which we will talk about another time. 
Anyway, so that's the bonfire, that's the fire keeper, and this is Anor Londo, and exploring this glorious place, heavily inspired by the Duomo di Milano in terms of architecture, which is one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world, uh, will be next time, which will be Monday, so join me again for that if you want to. Um, if you don't already, please follow me here on Twitch or on YouTube, or both, ideally, and uh, thanks very much to my Patreon patrons for their support, and uh, yeah, that's going to be all for today, because my voice is giving out. Thank you so much for coming along on this wild ride as I got stuck on a part of the game that I don't normally get stuck on. Actually, before we go, I'm just going to whack all of these points into intelligence, see how high we can get it. So I need another five points to be able to cast Soul Spear. Thanks so much for watching.